It's good. It's like Can I at least choose my old lady picture? No, you get you get the one that matches all the the Harold stock photos. Oh, does he have like a Yeah, she has a proper one. She's in yeah, she's in like every Harold. I thought, I thought you thing. took his like real life wife. No, no, hold on. I'll you know, she's not a thing. looker. I have no idea how no, old Harold is, is by yeah, the way. Is he like 70 or I think he's in his early 60s. Yeah, she's not terrible. He yeah, it looks like she's giving him a hand yeah, job. Yeah, no, it's photoshopped. Oh. <laughs> this is the Q&A to the DashCon video. I'm Internet Historian, and this is Internet Her Historian. Hello. And uh, we're going to go through a lot of the comments to, to the video, because a lot of people ask the same things. And uh, we're going to try and answer some of the other questions. For example, did I ever find that DVD? Should I just preempt and say before people ask in this who I am. Yeah. Just, uh, I'm not your sister, caretaker, kind of. I'm not your wife. Mm. Uh, Live-in girlfriend is what I'm, I'm, I'm thinking. <laughs> That'll do. Sounds pretty good. Uh, yeah, that just well, answers, we've been that's together half the for, question. We've been together for about 45 years. <laughs> Maybe it's time to settle down. Mm. Yeah, are they wearing wedding rings in that picture? No. No, neither of them. All right, so. Uh, just to get that out of the way. Okay, dash con. Uh, with these, I actually have taken screenshots of the actual questions, so mm. but they're just kind of the abridged version. So, why was it called DashCon? Oh, there's an interesting story behind this. So, the event started with a fundraiser on, on Indiegogo, and they wanted to raise $7,000, and they raised $4,000 only. And they actually set up the event under the name TumblrCon, and they got about halfway through that campaign... And then it was either their lawyer or someone from Tumblr said to them, um, by the way, this is a billion dollar company and you can't just use their trademark. So they realized that they could be in serious trouble. So they changed the name from TumblrCon to DashCon, Dash being the dashboard that you get on every sort of social media platform. So it became even more vague than the original a far too open community of Tumblr. It's like saying, let's have a Facebook con. Mm. What are you going to do? Invite 660 million people? All right. Good. All right. Who was the official promoter? Like, I think they mean, oh. well, they mean, because most conventions have sort of someone who, you know, gives it out to the public, I think. So who was behind the convention? Basically that group of people. Oh, I see what you mean. Yeah, yeah. Um, who created it? Who... It, brought it to the community. It was a bunch of uh, people who uh, are a little bit prominent on Tumblr or who use Tumblr a lot or are big fans. Were they prominent? They were known so, beforehand? Sort of. They were. I think some of them were well known in the Super Who Lock community, which is a cross of um, Doctor Supernatural, who Doctor oh. Who and Sherlock Holmes. Yeah, ba basically, I, I, look, I don't want to say these, these, people name, these people's names, although you can find them pretty easily online. They are most, they were at least at the time, mostly teenagers, 18, 19, and a couple people in their early 20s. And one girl in particular who seemed to really head everything, who was 32. Um, although Was she the, the large and in charge one you see on the panel, or no, the redhead? She was the redhead. Okay. There was no one who had any real or, or substantial experience running an event like this or, or really events and uh, events in general so it was no wonder that it was a, a disaster well most people have the sense to just start small but they yeah. just kind of went big guns straight away immediately just, carried away yeah and just started spending 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 yeah uh so the next one is 65 dollars is pretty expensive for a brand new convention uh basically was this a mistake did they have any justification given as to why it would be $65? I know it was sort of a weekend kind of thing. Yeah. I think it was a combination of greed and naive optimism. They thought, oh, we know how to do this and we'll have so many people demanding to come to this convention and it's going to be so great because, you know, we know everything. Um, that they thought they could justify that price. Obviously, you know, if you're going to start a new event, you gotta, you've, you've got to start small and then build up. Let a reputation build over time. People know that this is a good thing, whatever. They didn't bother with any of that. They were just going to jump straight to this is fucking Comic-Con too. 
even just working on quality and going, this is what we'll have. This will be the space. This will be the max number of people. Mm. Making it more exclusive and then having them give good feedback for next year. Could you imagine how how well it would have been received if they had just made a, a modest convention and say they had sold out of tickets and then people know next year you've got to be in quick. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that's <laughs> that's what a well thought out new convention I think would do, but mm. greedy. Um, that's when you can start to jack up the price. But uh, I think a lot of it came down to uh, they started seeing cash coming in. They are very young, and then they would spend it. Realize they're you know hey we're spending a lot of money, so they they sort of justify it to themselves and they go oh well more people will come or. Oh, we're going to sell out, so it's fine. Oh, yeah, okay, we're spending like $80,000, but that's okay because we'll get this amount of money with absolutely no certainty that they ever would get. Um, So the next one is, how do you run a convention for such a niche thing? Don't they have to be very general things? The ones I've been to are all sci-fi and anime, which I... I'm not sure why I included this question because if anything, it's the complete opposite. It's like a a bit of everything, but... Yeah, I sort of felt it was uh, the other way around. It was... um, far too broad yeah so you could have a convention for reddit but if people people go on all sorts of different subreddits and it's a very similar thing with with tumblr although it's all done with tags and and communities and well i don't know i don't really use it but so maybe i'll just take that question and go uh how did they get people to come if it's such a broad thing like Mm. tumblr i think they just appealed to the most stereotypical type from their community the the young girls who are really into the the handsome british boys so and all the shows that go along with that the feminist stuff the gender queer stuff all that business they they really cared to with their speakers and their their talks and everything else it wasn't as though someone was suddenly going to show up you know with a an aliens theme or a or an x-men costume or, or whatever people had an understanding of what the, the themes of the convention would be because they they knew who was giving talks yeah. or you know what, what other people were doing. Well, I'd love to know that how they chose because when I actually think about it, I have no idea. Like you see people dressed up and go, what the hell is that? And yeah, mm. having sort of the gay lesbian, I'm not even going to try and attempt that acronym. I can, I can do this one off by Hannah. I know you can. <laughs> go ahead. But you have to say what they are too, which you, no one knows. Oh, no, I, I know what they all are. Um, it's LGBTQQIP2SAA+. I'll take your word for it. You could be lying and no one's going to pick you up on it because no one cares. Lesbian, bisexual, uh, trans, oh, I forgot gay. Um, I'm going to cut this whole Q is <laughs> queer. And then the other Q is, oh no, I forgot. BBQ. What's that extra Q? Que- Q no, Q, the other Q is for questioning. Um, I is intersex, P is penis, no, I can't, oh, fuck. My point was, uh, it seems completely random to have, okay, we love these TV shows, let's throw in some LG whatever, LG, oh no, okay. LGBT, okay. Panels. Yes. Yeah, oh, there's a, there's a, they had in one panel a guy, um, Mark is here. And he... He's queer. He's doing <laughs> Yeah. Well, he was the the Mexican gay dude who they thought was a straight white male talking on the panel. And they um, were, were... They were mean him, to him. They were, they were giving him death threats. My point is, what's the thinking behind what you choose? Sex and then TV shows and then some yeah. guys dressed up as the devil. And there's like Night Vale and steampunk and... Yeah, and like there's a BDSM panel at one point. And yeah, a, it's like, well, it's why? Because all all gay and lesbian oh, and trans and things want to do BDSM too. That's like a whole different subset all, of people. Yeah, I mean, all, it might intersect, but why? <laughs> what was the actual question? Um, how do you run a convention? <laughs> something so niche. You should. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's right. I think I think if you're gonna run a convention, make it fucking specific. Yeah, make it niche. Um, next question is, steam-powered giraffe is there? No, never. They they never even signed an agreement to show up. Although they didn't stop um, Dashcon from advertising it on all of its marketing materials. 
and charging extra fees for, for tickets to the concert. Steam Power Giraffe never showed up and never agreed mm. to go. I was going to say, which is the first sort of point where you go, I mean, they could sue you for using their material and saying that they'll show up because then it looks like they haven't shown up to something and that's sort of defamatory and, you know, there's so many things these people should have been sued for, yeah, well, especially well, in America. Well, every time something went wrong, they immediately deflected blame onto someone else. Mm. But it wasn't, it wasn't just that. It was... No one knew that Steam Powered Giraffe wasn't coming until people showed up on the day. And then they would go, oh, right, I'm ready for my Steam Powered Giraffe concert. I've been excited for weeks. And then they go, oh, sorry, it's canceled. <clears throat> anyway, uh, the ball pit's over there. <laughs> and that was, that was basically how it went. Um, so that sort of also leads on to, I think, who did show up that they said would show up, which ended up being mm. no one, I guess. Uh, so, so Welcome to Night Vale showed up, and they, they actually fulfilled about half of their contract. Oh, well, not, they, they didn't have a proper contract, but they, they fulfilled half of their act. So, on the Friday, they were supposed to come in and, and do signings for these hundred people who had won, like, a, a raffle sort of arrangement. And they went in and they, they did that, and they hadn't even received payment at that point. They were supposed to receive the funds well in advance, but... Oh, that's that's uh, Dashcon management for you. Um, but don't these acts have managers? Yeah. Like most, that's why you have a manager is to get a contract and agreement. That's probably why they couldn't sue is if they didn't have an actual contract and they've just gone, yeah, buddy. Yeah, yeah. You know, these aren't these aren't huge acts. So some of these things they consider as just binding through emails or or, or, or something else. Or they or they you know they have a lot of goodwill, especially to new conventions. So they. They think if someone says, oh, look, I'll pay you on this date, you know, as soon as you arrive at the convention, we will pay you. I don't want to say the amount of money, although you can find out how much it was. I think it's a bit unfair for me to say. Um, we will pay you X amount in cash the moment you show up. And then they just don't. Mm. You know, how, how can you, uh, you know, prevent that happening sometimes? Yeah. And especially if you've already seen the fans and seen people who are excited, you don't want mm. to be that jerk who's like, well, we're not getting paid for this, so we're out. Mm. But yeah. you, know, you still have to feed yourself too. And didn't they, they stopped a European tour just to be there? Yeah, so it was it was absolutely shocking. So uh, they had booked a European tour. They cancelled that halfway through so that they could come back to the United States and do this convention. So they get to the convention. They are supposed to be paid in cash. The moment they show up and they're supposed to be given a complimentary room, uh, I think food as well, and they're supposed to have all their travel expenses reimbursed. Which from Europe to America, I don't know about how expensive it would be, but certainly from Europe to Australia is a lot. I know they're closer, but it's still a, it's a long trip. And there's a few of them too. It's not like there's, yeah. there's two people. It's there's like six, seven, or, six or seven, uh, I think, including the management. So... Yeah, so it's, these aren't unsubstantial amounts. And then the day comes when they actually show up. So they, they do their signing on the Friday, fulfill that obligation without pay. They should have been paid already. They stay in the hotel room and they I think they only get like one or two hotel rooms when they need more. So there's people sleeping on couches. It's, you know, it's ridiculous. And then I know one of them sleeps in a, in a atrocious usually a, condition. Usually so. a hotel only allows a certain number of people per room and they'll get, like give you a cot or something. I don't think they'd actually let no, they were all full five up. people. They were all full room. up on that. Especially like the Marriott. Like, yeah. When you book a hotel room, there's a max per room. Yeah. That way they get more room sales. So I'd, unless they snuck someone in, which is easy. Yeah. I'm not sure. I I, I remember, but some, some of them were sleeping in a, atrocious conditions. So... When, when they did arrive on that Friday, by the way, the Dashcon staff took them to the front desk and they put the Dashcon credit card at the front desk saying, hey, look, you know, here, here this is all comped, no problem. The just, Saturday that... Yeah, go on. I was just picturing like a piece of cardboard with scribbled on Dashcon. <laughs> <laughs> they have the event on Saturday that's coming up. And the management is still saying, we'll get the cash to you soon. We'll get the cash to you soon. Yeah, we'll reimburse you. We'll reimburse you. Then, like, one o'clock happens when the, the fucking event's supposed to start. They still haven't paid. And so, and so Welcome Tonight, they'll go, well, we're not fu complete fucking suckers. We're not going to do this 
and then be promised to be paid afterwards when you've fulfilled none of your obligations so far. So they said, you get the cash to us now before we go on stage or we walk. And because of the event the night before where they had to raise $17,000 and most of it involved cash they had on hand, uh, they, they couldn't pay them and they couldn't go to the bank for some reason, apparently. So Welcome to Night Vale walked. Everybody's disappointed. And then when Welcome to Night Vale checks out of the hotel, surprise, surprise, someone has pulled the credit card from the front desk. Mm. So they get lumped with the bill. I think it's also important to mention that it wasn't just Welcome to Night Vale who had this sort of trouble. The Baker Street babes were also left out in the cold with all of their expenses. They threatened to sue on Twitter. It's not entirely confirmed whether they, they receive their hotel expenses back from the organizers. Yeah, so I think they were they were fairly level-headed and, and they, they tried to be as good about it as anyone could be. But you'd be fucking fuming. Mm. So online, everyone knows what's happened and the Dashcon people are really getting shit on. And the people from Welcome to Night Vale showed an enormous amount of patience with them. But exactly what happened at the convention happened to them in the aftermath as well. So they would say, yeah, yeah, look, we're really sorry about what happened, but we, we do owe you reimbursement for X, Y, Z, travel expenses, yada, yada, yada. And then they would just never pay it. And it was like every day they were supposed to be sent this money and they just kept not paying it. And after a while, yeah, they, they were getting pretty fucking fed up. So they were, they were on Twitter and they were like, this is, this is a con. This mm. is fraud. My guess is unless they were going to say, we're going to sue you or here's some papers or... Then you'd go, oh shit, mm. they're serious. But otherwise, they have no claim, really. Yeah. That's why you have contracts. The problem is a lot of these amounts are just so small mm, that, that you can't do anything. Uh, it's still their livelihood, mm. but um, they're small amounts. And I tell you, one of the things they did pay for in their expenses was a lawyer. And so a lot of this stuff, they could just say to their contract lawyer, you know, how much trouble are we really in? You mean the Dashcon people the had Dash a lawyer? The Dashcon people had a lawyer. Really? Yeah. Did he do anything? <laughs> Apparently. Didn't draw up any contracts or anything? Well, they didn't get sued. Mm. Okay, so that leads pretty well into the next question. Did anyone sue the convention? Because it seems like that's something someone must have done. No, there was no lawsuit. I think we're still talking in amounts that are just too small to be worthwhile. I think in total, the, the expenses for the entire convention were probably less than $100,000. Lawyers' fees for something like this could easily top that. Yeah. So... Yeah, I think the only know. person who was going to sue them if it came to it would have been the Marriott if they hadn't have paid mm. their bill because they had a contract. 40 grand is a lot of money. Yeah, you bet they would have collected. But everyone else is just not worth their time. Yeah, what are a bunch of kids going to do anyway? Yeah. Uh, next question is, is pretty much the same as the last question, really. Why haven't they been charged with fraud? I think that's more to do with the donations and oh, I forget what the charity was called, but the fact that they said... Ra that, yeah, Random Acts. Random Acts. They said that they had a partnership with Random Acts, but they didn't. So mm. presumably Random Acts never got any money, even if it was donated, but we don't really know what was donated. That, that's right. So I think there's only really two cases where you can say it's fraud. So fraud has a fairly specific legal definition. It's not as though they didn't hold a convention. They held a, an extraordinarily shitty convention. The two things that could be deliberate acts of fraud were the steam-powered giraffe, still having that on their marketing materials, although that could just be misleading marketing, and then the charity, random acts, if they really did just collect that money. They have enough of an excuse, though, for the charity and that they did fill out the online form. But they certainly didn't have any recognized partnership with them and it is not known whether a single penny went to the charity although it is known that some of the donations uh, that some donations were made so where that money's gone it might only be a few hundred bucks it might even be less mm. no one knows but it was in cash so it's impossible to track anyway yeah. random acts by the way it's just like you have a couple of these uh, bins around the place and you you do random acts of kindness so you just put in cash when, when you see them if you feel like it. But of course no one has any cash left because they just donated it all. Maybe they went, okay, the random act of kindness today is going to be paying our fees so we can get our patrons some <laughs> some actual content. Yeah. 
No, it doesn't actually say what the random act will be. Yeah. Did the organizers really walk out without any consequences at all? I don't think there were real consequences though. I think they're anonymous enough that they just were shunned in the Tumblr community. So what? Well, yes and no. I mean, they were they were all over the bloody news too. Were they? There were tons of articles written about the failure of Dashcon. Yeah. So uh, you imagine that you're 18, 19, 20 and people are just shitting on you for, for weeks. Yeah, but people uh, forget. I don't, I don't think they do. It, it, you don't talk about it because it's still old. But if someone says Dashcon, it still brings a whole lot of things to mind. And if someone ever said, oh, yeah, I was one of the organizers of Dashcon. And then they said, hey, uh, I heard you guys a, a convention coming up. Do you mind if I help mm. out? You go, fuck off. <laughs> I have experience. <laughs> Does anyone know where I can find the full video of the guy trolling Dashcon? So the apparently very yeah. anti-Semitic guy <laughs> who filmed all the good footage. Yeah. But which I don't know is a joke. Or... Yeah, no, no, it's all, it's all a joke. He's kidding. Okay. Yeah, no, no. Um, Oh, I actually linked to his channel in the description, so you can find it there. But uh, it's it's not in one video. It's actually all broken into lots of little pieces. So you might have a little bit of trouble tracking it down, but uh, you'll be able to find it there on his channel. Cool. He's a fucking funny dude. He's on the Discord sometimes as well, so uh, oh, feel he? free to jump in. Did someone actually piss in the ball pit? It's not confirmed. So... So the story goes, because uh, you can't just sit there and piss yourself in the pit. It's not going to work. You can't just whip your dick out. Uh, so the the story is that um, a couple of people from 4chan went to the convention. Apparently the modus operandi was that they went to the bathroom with a water bottle, pissed into the water bottle, and then when they went into the ball pit with it, it was like, oh, just sort of let it leak out in the corner. But it's not entirely confirmed. It is known that the ball pit deflated. It is known that by Sunday they didn't even bother trying to bring it back. Who knows? But uh, wasn't an mo. Sorry, just for clarity, an mo is something done several times. So what's the guy's mo? That's what I thought. It had to be sort of a serial thing. Okay. How many things has he pissed in in this man? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. It's his usual style. Yeah. Okay. Did you ever find the DVD? This. This gets asked on different videos. Oh god, this was every asked. day. I actually, I think I I took 13 screenshots of this question and then I just stopped because they all just asked it. Mm. Go ahead. No. So, it's hard to get confirmation either way, but the most likely outcome is that it was never made. So, after they saw what kind of disaster it was, what was the point in making this DVD? That being said, here's what we do have. There was a photography studio that was going to be hired uh, for the making of the DVD that was already organized, and we know the name of that photography studio. We also know that there are many cameramen working with many cameras in different places throughout the convention. So a lot of the panels were recorded. That footage, that raw footage, exists somewhere out there unedited, unprocessed, but still probably thoroughly entertaining. So the bounty goes unclaimed. Um, I'm happy to double it to, to 200 bucks. And if someone can find a couple of hours of good raw footage, I'd be happy to pay it. You can see uh, some of the people who had cameras in the original uh, Friday video, which is you know when they're asking for the $17,000. There's like five people up on the stage standing around there with cameras. A lot of them were recording the panels as well. So we know it exists. We don't know where it is. The DVD itself, never produced. Someone got in touch with me on YouTube and claimed to have been in a relationship with one of the main organizers of the event. And they described in some detail some of the mismanagement um, of the convention itself and, and why things went so poorly. And, and to sum it up, as soon as they started receiving money, they started spending it. So uh, just I extraordinary financial mismanagement. They would book hotel rooms for themselves on little trips for no reason whatsoever. 
you know, pretending as though it was a, a business expense. They would have expensive lunches where they would get together and, and try to organize things, but you know, you, you don't need to do that. A couple of them were paying themselves a small salary. They were just spending too much on, on things that didn't matter, especially for a first time convention. So they must have spent well over a thousand dollars just on uh, things like the, the VIP um, lanyards and, and wristbands and, and access paraphernalia, you know, the stuff mm. you wear on you. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, to, to make sure you can get in. When, you know, a stamp or, yeah. or a ticket would do, but they, they wanted to be fancy. Mm. Um, yeah. So, so but by the time the convention happened, they had no fucking money. And, you know, they, they probably intended to have a pretty impressive ball pit. <laughs> and they, they had already booked out the bouncy castle beforehand, so they, they, ha- they did have that. But they, they went, we got 20 bucks. What do we do? How do we create this ball pit? Hmm. Jump down to Walmart, get a couple bags of balls and uh, an inflatable pool. Yeah, sounds but good. But it, it didn't even look like a new pool. It looked like something they had brought from home and then put some, some balls yeah. in it. Yeah, it from gross. someone's yard. Yeah. yeah, Found in a swamp just floating around. Yeah. yeah. But just a disclaimer on that, we've never verified this person. It just seemed like he had a lot of detail I thought was interesting to mention, but there's no way of knowing if any of that is true. Yeah, I know, I know the guy's name as well. It could just be complete BS because he saw the video and wanted to, yeah. you know, why would he reach out? But yeah. I could see that happening, but speculation. Yeah. Well, he, he reached out because he wanted to correct some things. So, yeah. so um, uh, he also disputed some of the numbers that, that I came to at the end of the video. Mm. which I think is fair to say. So one question that I wanted to address that, that we haven't got written down here is a lot of people said, and this drove me nuts, 350 times 20 is not 700, it's 7,000. And I, I know that, but I, it also says in the video, 10% of the people in this room. So I calculated the room as 350 people and about 10% of that room. So 10% of 350 is 35 people. So 35 people we think donated cash. That's why I didn't want to address it because Mm. my thought is if it's answered in the video, Mm. I'm not going to address it. (laughs) I I get that I talk quickly though, that sometimes the music can be a little loud. Yeah. Because most people go, yeah, you you see that. So many people said it. That being said, there may have been more cash donations than that. Okay, what does that really mean? They might not have pocketed 9,000, they might have only pocketed 5,000 or something. But that, it still means they pocketed thousands of dollars. The online donations that were given is how they received most of their money. And they were able to do that because not just the people in the room were, were giving via PayPal, but people online were giving by PayPal. That's how they were able to raise so much money so quickly. Because everyone's watching on Tumblr, people are watching on Twitter, and they go, oh fuck, uh, we, we gotta help these people out, this is our community. That's before they really understand mm. how bad this thing is and, and how much um, it is the management's fault. Also, here's a, here's a little tidbit. The management is always blaming someone else. And they said of the hotel staff, the reason that the convention was going to be shut on the Saturday and the Sunday wasn't because they hadn't paid the $20,000 that was owed by contract, but because um, they were racist, sexist, homophobes. And, you know, they had it in for the guests there. So they just wanted more money. And it was just such an absolute lie. And it was also one of the reasons why people donated so much because they saw it as mm, fighting hate bigotry crime. or something. No. As if they care what the convention is. Yeah. They let you have BDSM stuff. They don't care. They don't I'm sure they hold all sorts of weird shit there. Mm. But they want the money for it. Yeah. These convention places will book a BDSM convention next to a wedding. They don't care. Yeah. Marriott's hosted adult conventions. Yeah. So. And if you've got a, a, a contract, you just go, well, you can't do that. And here you go. Mm. Stupid. Yeah, it was, it was an out and out lie. Mm. Uh, and I thought actually that was probably the most egregious thing. Yeah. in some ways because they were smearing the name of of the hotel mm. when actually the hotel had really given them a break by yeah. saying um hey look we'll, we'll do this verbal agreement and you can pay us over the weekend yeah. um yeah um that's all the questions i sort of found about dashcon did you want to say anything else or? um yeah yeah actually was there another attempt at a dashcon yes <laughs> really 
There was nearly a DashCon 2015. DashCon 2. <laughs> Electric. <laughs> Boogaloo. <laughs> yeah. So um, essentially what happened was I, I think there was a small profit and the people who owned DashCon LLC decided, look, let's let's give this another go despite uh, the enormous backlash. Um, but they were smart enough to realize that they couldn't just do the exact same thing. So they changed the state and tried to hide their identity mm. when they when they started the second DashCon. But it was still called DashCon? Yes, if, 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 in the very beginning. Um, immediately they started getting death threats. <laughs> <laughs> Where's my fucking money? <laughs> um, so they went, oh, fuck. Okay. Uh, we'll call it EmojiCon. Uh. No, no, it, it, it gets better. Don't you worry. The exact same thing happened as the beginning with the Indiegogo campaign. Uh, hey, um, EmojiCon is already a trademarked thing. You can't just take that. Is it really? <laughs> yeah. Like so, the word emoji is trademarked? Emo EmojiCon is, for sure. So they changed the name to Emoticon. Which sounds like something out of fucking Metal Gear Solid. And they, they said it in, I can't remember, I think it was New Mexico? Everyone does their second round of these mm, things in yeah. New Mexico, it seems. Like a, you know, different, different part of the country. People realized that it was still the same people involved. And again, they received a bunch of death threats and what the fuck are you doing? They still started their Indiegogo campaign. They're still receiving angry emails. They started selling tickets. Did they get any money on Indiegogo? They got, uh, yes, they got a little bit of money from Indiegogo and they and they sold a couple of pre-sale tickets. And then they went, ah, uh, now nah, fuck this, this isn't going to work. And they shut it all down. But they, did they return the money for the tickets they sold? Absolutely not. That's not. <laughs> so they, they liquidated the company, Dashcon LLC ceased to exist in 2015. And they sold all of their furniture on Craigslist and all that sort of stuff. <laughs> and... Um, what do you mean? They, they haven't held a uh, convention since. They sold their furniture. Oh, no, not like they didn't go homeless or anything. Oh. Well, sorry, what, what I mean is, you know, sometimes you end up um, not renting everything, you buy things or you... Oh, you whatever. mean like you, maybe you they had up, an office or... A... Yeah, like, no, you end up with like a bunch of assets sometimes left over <laughs> after a convention. Um, uh, you know, you I might have 5,000 paper cups or something. And, uh, and they, they, anyway, they sold all of that and they liquidated the company. But when they liquidated the company, I believe it was um, insolvent. So the liabilities outweighed the assets. So who knows? Maybe maybe it all ends well. Maybe they did lose money. And, we um, can only hope. Yeah, yeah. That'd be nice. All right. So that's uh, that's Dashcon. That's the Q and A. We're gonna try to cover all of the other videos as well because there's always so much more that happens yeah. that never makes it in. Uh, I, I appreciate you checking out the Patreon. Uh, we've got a couple of reward tiers now. So the first one is uh, like, uh, if you come join the the Discord, you get a Discord rank, and you can access the the latest video on the main channel a day early. Um, although if somehow that starts being shared out or, or something, you know, because because a lot of my videos end up on Facebook and instantly and, on Reddit. So yeah, and, and, and I'm not places, sure how so. it'll work out. But yeah, so if, if that starts, that. yeah, if that starts happening, then I'll just have to release it. But yeah. there's other stuff in the top tier, in the first tier too, though. So even if that doesn't work at some point, there's other stuff in it, and maybe you'll yeah. add something else if it has to be taken away. But yeah, yeah, that's at right. the moment we're trying that. Yep. And uh, also, if you, you know, there's a second tier as well, where we have like a bi-weekly movie night thing uh, with all the patrons, and we we jump on YouTube and we have like this. We have we use SciTube, I think it is, and it's it's like all synced together, so we can watch like really shitty Lifetime movies and and The Room. Yeah, look, I'm, so I'm I'm trying to do this full time, and uh, eventually I'd like to to get to a point where. Um, I can not just say myself full time, but I can bring on a second person, and there would actually be a historian just with me. And I have done a tiny, tiny bit, but ninety nine point nine percent of everything is you. But I edit a little bit. Oh, like no, you you do all these QAs and well, they're not difficult to do. <laughs> still, I, I appreciate. It. Yeah, so so that would mean that we would be able to come up with videos more often, and uh, yeah, we, we have some some pretty substantial long term goals for that. So uh, yeah, uh, check it out if you if you want to check it out. Um, so if you have any other questions, leave a comment and then I'll, I'll probably pick it up. Yeah, leave it in the comment for that video because we definitely, mm. even if there's 5,000 comments on that thing already, we go through all of them. Yep. So yeah, leave your comment and throw it up. Yep. 
Hopefully you don't mind listening to my voice. I know it's not as uh, smooth as the historians, but he didn't like talking to himself. So, <laughs> <laughs> so I'll be possibly in the next one. Mm. Well, I spend all day just walking around talking to the cat in a baby voice, so... That's true.